I get to go first. So, did everybody hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, well, I've been involved in gasification since 2009. Uh, this project has been going on on campus, I think it was birthed in 2006. And then uh, it's... Uh, Okay, so this uh, project's been going on since 2006. Uh, we're just wrapping up on the last phase. What I'm going to be talking about tonight is the last three years of this project. So this, we've done 18 different steps in this project. This is just the last two or three steps of this project to fully wrap it out. This is uh, the most interesting project I think I've ever been involved in. The outcome of this was so far full of success. So what I'm going to do is first talk about what was the need within the military. This was a military project. It started out as a military project. Uh, it was funded through originally the Department of Energy and then the Department of Defense. This project was all the Department of Defense. The last three years of this phase and really the last 18 months uh, was done under the Army Corps of Engineers. So this is the phase of the project that I'm going to be talking about tonight. This is unrelated to the previous steps uh, years ago. So this is actually separate funding that we applied for and that we got around three years ago. So, okay, so what was the military need? <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm fighting this sort of thing. The military need was basically on forward operating bases. Now what's a forward operating base? A forward operating base is a army camp that's in theater in an active military camp. Meaning that these are soldiers that are right on the front lines, the enemy's right outside. They have issues with generating electricity because they have to use uh, a single fuel in the military, which is JPA, which is very similar to diesel fuel. So all of the equipment on the forward operating base operates off of one fuel, JPA. So they also generate all their electricity from diesel fuel. Because it's in an active military zone, to be able to deliver that fuel to the forward operating base, you can imagine a gigantic tanker truck being driven down a road, don't you think that would be a target? So there's a lot of infrastructure that's required to provide the security so that the truck can make it to the forward operating base in one piece. The, the, the military estimates the cost to deliver that fuel to a forward operating base to be between $350 and $800 a gallon. And the cost is because of the security that's required to be able to get that truck there safely. Well, the military also has another problem with forward operating bases is what to do with the waste. Now you don't just call up the local casella and say send a truck and we're going to throw it in the back of the truck and you take it out. Because the problem is, is a, a garbage truck is very difficult to inspect for what could be in the truck. Who's the driver? Is there any weapons? Is there any type of uh, device that could explode that's in the truck? So they pretty much abandoned using local carters to be able to take the waste away because of the security issues of it. So what came about is that they started doing these burn pits, I'm sure everyone of you have heard about it, where they either do it on directly on the ground or they dig a hole, just like what you see in this picture, and they just throw all the waste in a pile, and then they throw 15 or 20 gallons of the fuel that was just cost them $800 a gallon to get delivered there, and they light it up and they just let it burn. So the idea behind this project was, was to come up with a system that could kill two birds with one stone. Basically, be able to take this waste and actually now convert it into a fuel that could be used directly to generate electricity and save liquid diesel fuel. So that's what this entire phase of this project was about, that it was a portable system that could actually work and be used for this purpose. Okay, so what is this? Well, basically, this is just like Mr. Fusion from Back to the Future. So if you remember that from 1985, if you're that old, where Marty takes the garbage and he puts it into Mr. Fusion, and then all of a sudden that's what powers the DeLorean to go into the next wave of time. 
basically what this does is you put waste in, it could be any type of carbaceous material. So anything that burns in a campfire, you can pretty much put into this, and it thermally converts it into a gas that's like natural gas that you can then uh, burn inside of a diesel engine and actually power the engine to generate electricity. So as you feed more of this gas into the engine, you basically save diesel fuel. Okay, so when you're doing anything that's, uh, you know, it says on the bottom here about accelerating what naturally occurs in the earth over thousands of years to less than 20 minutes. That's essentially what this technology is. You're basically doing what naturally happens below the surface of the earth that takes thousands and thousands of years to be able to convert carbaceous material into one of three things or all of three things, either a gas, an oil, or coal. Basically, we're doing all three in this process. So what we're doing is we're basically taking what naturally happens in the earth and you're super accelerating it under intense conditions to be able to make these events happen in a very short period of time. Less than 20 minutes. Is it really 20 minutes? Most of that time is spent just drying the material out. So the actual chemical reaction that happens down in that zone is almost instantaneous. Okay, so where did this all come from? Well, I've been involved in product development, new technology development for 27 years. And one thing that's so valuable to know is what doesn't work. So what the way we approached this project was we built numerous gasifiers before we were involved with testing gasifiers. I basically took Excel and I took every single point that we wanted to have actually as an outcome in this system, meaning it has to be portable, it has to be able to take waste without having to be pre-processed. We don't want to get into pelletizing or cutting. We don't want to have to pre-dry the waste. We want it to be able to be just like would be done on a military camp. You want to be able to take the waste that would be sorted by the soldiers and you take it just in back form, drop it in, and it does its magic and gas comes out the other side and then you can directly uh, fuel the, the generator off of it. Well, what I did was I took Excel and I took every single feature that was in the other gasification systems that I knew, and we directly did the exact opposite. So what we did was, we basically said, if we knew that this was a, a, a problem with this style gasifier, how can we do something that's directly opposite of that? And there was over 40 different points that we tried to do to do the direct opposite of that. And that's how this uh, project got birthed into a new technology because we stumbled onto some things that we totally unexpected in this project. So the outcome of that was really, to me, even now, we got the recent results just a month ago, and I'm really shocked at uh, how well this actually worked throughout the whole progression of this project. So basically what you're gonna see the pictures of in a second is what we built here on campus. This was totally built by faculty, staff, and students, uh, mostly working on their internships, uh, all people who are involved directly here with the college. So this entire system, every weld was made here on campus. Everything was fabricated here on campus. Everything was assembled here on campus. Everything was disassembled here on campus.